watch and burn. Hey everyone, so tonight I want to discuss Michael Haneke's 2005 film, and that is Caché, otherwise known as Hidden. This tells the story, again, of uh, characters who share the names of uh, many characters throughout uh, a great deal of Haneke's entire filmography. And that is, of course, Georges, Anne, and their son, um, uh, Pierrot. Now, the name Pierrot has never been used by Haneke in any other films, but Georges and Anne, or Anna, they've been used quite a bit. And what starts happening in this film is George starts receiving these sort of mysterious random video cassettes that are showing like the front of his house or you know his son's school or the his parents house where he grew up when he was a kid and so on and so forth and nobody really knows who's sending them and they are particularly menacing because occasionally they'll become they'll come wrapped in a picture it'll either be of a chicken with its throat cut it actually it's a children's drawing of a chicken with its throat cut. And nobody really understands what any of this is about, but then as of course, as the movie continues, um, we find out that when George was six, uh, his parents had sort of low key started to adopt a kid who was also six by the name of Majid, whose parents were wiped out in the Paris massacre of 1961, where I believe two or 300 Algerians were drowned by the French national police. Yeah, the, by the French national police. Um, and this massacre had gone sort of unrecognized by the French and till possibly the 90s or the 2000s, I think they were made to sort of own up to it. But anyways, Majid's parents, uh, they went off to protest. They never came back. So it was assumed that they were drowned by the French National Police because a lot of Algerians who took part in the protest that would lead to the massacre ended up being drowned. And so Georges was six and he didn't like the idea that his parents were sort of, or he had to share his parents' attention with this kid. So he sets the kid up for a fall by having him slaughter this chicken that he knew would piss his parents off. And then Majid is pulled from his parents' house and he's raised in foster care. So essentially what this movie is about is it's sort of like the various ways that guilt can manifest itself because I've heard a lot of people discuss this film over the course of time and they've all wondered like, was it, you know, was it Georges, was it Pierre or Pierrot, sorry, and, and, and Majid's son who were sending the tapes? Was it Majid himself who chose to send the tapes? But as the movie continues on, there's one scene in particular where there's a video cassette that is sent to Georges and Anna and it's of the conversation that Georges had at Majid's house after a video cassette that he received had led him to Majid's door in his like low rent high rise where he lives. And after Georges leaves, you see Majid cry for pretty much an hour. And Georges was in the room and the place isn't that big. It's like I said, kind of low rent, so it's kind of cramped. And you can clearly see that there's no camera. Now I know today, as of May, 2023, you can get a camera that's the size of a fucking pinhead and you get it off Amazon for 30 bucks. But back in 2005, these sort of things were still relatively expensive. So I seriously doubt anybody who's living in pretty much full on poverty could afford to buy this film, buy this film, buy this camera and install it and then start to record George while he's in the person's, while he's in Majid's apartment. So personally, I always felt that it was fate manifesting these video cassettes and sending them to George because George had had, he needs to atone for what he did when he was six because this has been building inside of him ever since then. He may not have realized it, but this whole time he was sort of harboring a lot of like guilt in regards to what he did to Majid and how he totally screwed up this kid's life despite the fact that the kid's life was screwed up enough considering the fact that his parents were wiped out by the national police. And so I don't think anybody was sending the cassettes. I think, like I said, this was just um, George's denial of guilt and his denial of his involvement in wrecking somebody's life is the thing that manifested these physical cassettes and had them sent to him. So in a sense, he was kind of doing it to himself because this movie's a lot like Alfred Hitchcock in that sense. Like 
there's a lot of ambiguity here. Like there's nothing is ever carved in stone. Henneke actually said that with the, concerning the final scene where you see, where you see Pierrot and Majid's son meeting up at George's son's school, at Pierrot's school at the end, and you see them talking. It leads you to think that maybe they did it, but of course they are having some kind of discussion. And you see Majid's son lean in and he kind of like points at his chest like this while he's talking to Pierrot. And Henneke has gone on record as saying that he has written dialogue between those two characters, but that it will never be released. And so it's up to us to kind of draw our own conclusions. And that is something that I love about Hannah Kay's films is they're so completely wide open and every interpretation is right. And like, it's sort of like whenever I think of my, Michael Hannah Kay's films, I always think of the line from Billy Burroughs that says, nothing is real and everything is permitted. And nowhere is that more true than with the films of Michael Haneke. And Caché is a prime example of this because we aren't given any solid answers. There's no definite leads, there's no catharsis, there's no sort of, there's no hugs, there's no lesson learned, there's no sort of full house sitcom ending to this because it's a Haneke film and you're left on your own. And I do love that. And I love how despite the fact that Majid was raised in such a cruel and uncaring environment, that he still managed to raise his son right, because his son is an incredibly polite and well-spoken young man who really seems to always want to do the right thing. And I think that really speaks volumes about Majid's character and how his strength saw him through pretty much the worst circumstances ever, and it still allowed him to do the right thing in life by raising his son correctly. And then there is one scene in this film that's going to totally shock everybody. I'm not going to spoil it for anyone because the first time I saw it, it was like, ah, fuck, you know, I didn't see that coming. But it is concerning Majid calling George over to his apartment because he says that he wanted George to be there for it. So I think that's it. Yeah. So I will leave it there. So thank you for hanging out with me for, oh Christ, eight minutes while I discussed Michael Haneke's absolutely perfect 2005 film, Caché slash Hidden. Like always, if you like this review, or if you didn't like this review, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. But please, most importantly, don't forget that the world is a better place because you are in it. I'm gonna go. I will see you guys tomorrow. I just wanted to say thank you for making it through the entire video. I really appreciate it. And I'm going to remind everyone one more time, even though I've probably already done this in the video that you just watched, to please click the like button as well as the subscribe button because it helps this channel grow. And thank you for hitting like and subscribe. And we will see you guys really soon.